So, Duterte become the Philippines president, and I would have to say that I delayed doing this video just to see where things went, because obviously there is a lot of political shuffling going around, and you sort of see role reversals with the media, etc., completely turning things around because now they're no longer uh, following a specific group that used to control the Philippines. There's some positive stuff come out of the recent changes. For a start, he's already said that he's not going to chase Areo and Binay relating as uh, Areo, Aquino and Binay relating to pilfering or whatever. Um, it's up to the ombudsman. And I think that's quite a good move politically for him because A, the ombudsman's supposed to do that. But B, it cuts down on the risk of assassinations as well and also keeps some stability. And I think that's the, the key element he has here is everything he has sort of implemented recently has started to create some stability. One of the interesting things is relating to uh, Tommy Oz, uh, not Tommy Oz, but yeah, Tommy Oz Manor in Cebu seems to be siding in a similar way relating to getting rid of criminals. He's actually put a bounty on people's heads uh, relating to crime. A lot of people have actually changed the way they operate and there are, there's actually been reports of some of the drug dealers and whatever actually leaving. Um, let's be honest here, I can see a big slide um, that will improve the Philippines relating to crime, serious crime. Um, it's not going to be uh, correct in a human rights sense, I'm sure. Um, but at the same time, I sit on the fence in many ways because it actually fixes the country, then it's a positive step. It ain't going to be an easy one, it's not going to be a nice one, but it's been so bad for so long, if it actually starts to clean up some of it, all the better for the nation. Um, what else have I seen that's been pretty good? Uh, relating to the issues with China and trying to take over the whole of Asia for its... Uh, I love that, that, that. It says China Sea, so it must all be mine. <laughs> um, putting a push that the U US and Japan should be involved in the talks, etc. helps to stabilize the region. That's something Duterte's put forward. Um, one of the other things that the negative media love to push is um, Duterte said he would cut off ties with Australia and the US, etc. He didn't actually say that. What he actually said is if they decided to cut their ties, which is a very different thing. Um, but you've got to remember, the media is anti-socialism. Um, because I know a lot of Americans, and I, I do say Americans because it doesn't generally come from anywhere else. Um, when they say, a lot of people say socialist, they say communist. Um, it's, it's not the same thing, but at the same, at the same time, Duterte is a socialist, um, but not a communist. <laughs> but pushing that aside because you either get, get that thing or don't. Um, the Philippines, due to its high poverty levels, yet it's a displacement of wealth problem, um, some socialism would actually help stabilize the country and actually distribute some of that wealth better. Because let's face it, the first thing he's done is increase wages for the police. Why is that important? Well, if you pay people right, they start doing their job properly. I've seen stuff in Africa where there's checkpoints put up by local army, police, etc. But they haven't been paid for three or four months. So they're taking money off the locals because they've got no food. They've got nothing. They've been left out in the wilderness with absolutely nothing. So they start to become um, as much of a problem for the... Um, locals as the criminals are, if not a bigger one, if they're a big enough force, because they need to survive. And the corruption within the business, but well, yes, yeah, a business within the government, um, pilfers off at the top. So there's very little at the bottom. 
if you start paying people right, you start to find that there's less criminal activity within the force um, because people start doing their jobs properly. Also, I believe the strong stance with, stance with Duterte is actually changing a lot of people's mentalities because the trickle effect starts to happen. Because if people start to see that people will get will get prosecuted, etc., unlike the okay, we didn't see anything. Um, these things are pay, playing a major part more than ever in the Philippines um, because you shove it on YouTube, they cannot hide, and with the way things are going, even the guys with some very close friends will struggle to actually get away with it. You can't hide from the camera. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way around that one. Um, so you have to be aware that things are changing. I would also say, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm expecting customs to have a kick up the backside next. Customs and immigration. Um, because the tampering with ballot buying boxes, uh, Duterte sees that as a major issue. Because he's already said before himself that every single item in there is of high value to the person who packed it. They've had, they packed it individually for specific people, etc., etc. So it, it's almost holy. <laughs> um, so I can see that starting to get a hammer in, getting rid of some of the corruption out of there. They're looking to improve the pay for teachers, etc. And people are going to go, where do you find all this extra money? The money's already there. But the problem is, the pork barrel, etc., they rob the kitty blind. If you can actually get all the people that actually matter and actually make the country function, I'm not on about politicians, I'm not about the Senate, I'm talking about the, the teachers, the, uh, the police, the harbour masters, whoever, the people that actually get things rolling. Um, if they start to function properly, a lot of other things start to function properly. It's, this is the domino effect. Taxi drivers have also been told, as well as jeepneys, you have to give the right change. Something quite strong. And I've seen something with, with the taxi drivers. And the funny thing is the look on their face, they don't know what to say. Because they don't want to go, I'll get stuffed, we'll do what we want. At the same time, I'm just going to have to take it. That they, Instead of ripping every person off at the airport, they're now going to have to give the change. If they don't, they're going to know about it. So for me, I think Duterte has already done a lot of changes to the Philippines in a very short period of time that everybody has actually turned around and said, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, I know there's that human rights stuff where people are about the, uh, worried about all these killings, blah, blah. That side hasn't really started yet, but a lot of the Filipinos I've spoken to couldn't care it did. They would actually appreciate getting all the drug dealers and that gone. Um, there was a, a bag snatcher killed at Ayala the other day, um, and that has already been said that it, it's already started. The cleansing, shall we say? Cleansing? See, the problem is cleansing is not politically correct these days due to what happened in World War Two, but when you start ridding a country of its criminals etc I don't know what else you could do what other phrase would be suitable because it's getting rid of them um, yeah strong word though but then again killing them is, is much much stronger than the word thanks for watching